I think if you ask probably anybody in the world, name a telescope, if they can name any telescope, it would be the Hubble Space Telescope. The concept that we could actually make a telescope that would be put into space and could be serviced by space-suited astronauts working out of the space shuttle was a tremendous leap of faith because the Hubble telescope was conceived and they started building it before the shuttle had ever flown. As with many advanced space projects, it was over budget, it was behind schedule. People don't remember this now, but even before Hubble was launched, there was a lot of criticism that, you know, this is a telescope that's it's never going to get launched, it's, it's, it's too expensive, and so on and so forth. But, in fact, in the spring of 1990, it was taken into space by the Space Shuttle Discovery, put into orbit. There was a lot of excitement about it, uh, a lot of publicity, and to the, I think, satisfaction of not only NASA, but the whole astronomy community, the general public really picked up on it, the idea that Hubble was going to be able to unlock the secrets of the universe. But those of us who are old enough remember what a disaster it was when the first images started coming back from the Hubble telescope, and to their horror, the astronomers discovered you couldn't focus properly. It was an absolute disaster. Instead of a star being a single point of light, the image was smeared over a much larger area. So all of the dreams that people had for Hubble were falling in, in ashes. Here was basically the problem. Um, this was the way the Hubble was designed, that this is the angular resolution, within a tenth of an arc second, you should have had over 80% of all the light, a really sharp image. Instead, the light was spread over a much wider area, and that's why all the images look fuzzy. And so, in order to do the measurements of its shape, they actually install a miniature telescope on top of the mirror, which essentially takes the hyperbolic shape of the Hubble mirror and transforms it into a spherical shape, which you can then measure. This instrument is called a hyperbolic null corrector. Now, in order for it to work properly, it's absolutely critical that it be positioned at just the right distance away from the focus of the main mirror. And so, in order to do that, they have a what we call a measuring rod. So in order to be sure that that measuring rod is put at just the right position, they put an end cap on it. This is the end cap here, with a little hole in the middle. The top of the measuring rod was reflective, and then the idea is they would shine a laser down through that hole. It would reflect off the top of the measuring rod and doing that, you could exactly measure the proper position of the measuring rod. Now, the people who designed this measuring rod anticipated the possibility that it might be installed incorrectly. So, in order to make sure that the light only was reflecting from the mirror, they wanted to be sure that the light didn't get reflected from the top of that end cap. So they put an anti-reflective coating on the top of the end cap. A little bit of this anti-reflective coating had peeled off right from around that hole. And so, exactly what people had tried to prevent is exactly what happened, as a result of which, the measuring rod was positioned about 1.3 millimeters away from its proper position, which doesn't seem like a lot, but given the precision of the Hubble optics, that meant that slightly too much glass, the mirror was made slightly too flat, um, a little bit too much glass was removed from the outer part of the mirror. How much? About two microns. An average human hair is about 50 microns, so one twenty-fifth of the diameter of a human hair. 
That's how much too flat the Hubble mirror was. So all right, we now understood what the problem was. The mirror was slightly too flat, and we understood how that happened. What are you going to do about it? Coming through the mirror, you've got this out-of-focus beam, which every instrument, every detecting instrument, shared that beam. They had a little mirror which would stick out, reflect the beam into the instrument. So what we had to do somehow, for every science instrument, we had to put in two tiny mirrors, each of them about the size of your thumbnail. The first mirror would intercept the out-of-focus light, which you can see that M1 mirror there, bounce it off another mirror, which was slightly curved, just to compensate for the lack of curvature in the primary mirror, and then that light, which would now be in focus, would be put into the science instrument. The mirrors would be deployed by motor drives, and they would all sort of spread out like the skeleton of an umbrella, and they had to be put into exactly the right place. I mean, this, this was a very complex job. So everything was done to reduce the risk of failure, including the decision that only crew who had previously done a spacewalk would be eligible to be selected to do a spacewalk on the Hubble mission. The bottom line was, I had done a spacewalk, so I had my EVA Spacewalkers Union card, and I was fortunate enough then to get selected to be on the crew that was going to go up and rescue Hubble. So, as I said, we knew that we had done everything that was set up. We had, we had done our job. Hubble had been repaired. But, would the optics actually work? Again, this is not a suspense story. You know that it did, but we didn't know at the time. And the thing is, you can't turn on the instruments right away. You have to give them about two weeks to outgas. Otherwise, when you turn on the high voltage, you'll get sparks and you'll blow your electronics. So it really wasn't until New Year's. It was, and I'll never forget this moment. It was New Year's Eve. We had had a party. It's about one o'clock in the morning. I was cleaning up the kitchen. The phone rang. It was an old astronomer friend from the Space Telescope Science Institute. You know, after, you know, Happy New Year, Jeff, Happy New Year. Do you have any champagne, Jeff? Well, yeah, we had a half a bottle still in the refrigerator. He said, well, pour yourself a glass. I'm not supposed to tell anybody this because one of our politicians wants to make an announcement in a few days. But we figured somebody on the crew should know that we've got the first images back from Hubble and it worked, as you all know. <laughs> hey, it's not a suspense story. You knew this. <laughs>